thing I ever more. Um, this here is a Topping DX3 Pro. And after I did the Topping MX3, everyone was like, Zeus, go suck this thing's dick. So I waited for someone to offer me one. Actually, I tried to buy one and it was like, eh, and then I ended up getting one, but it was going to be delivered late. So someone else offered it and they're like, hey, I want you to put this in the yard sale. I don't even want it. I'm like, all right, cool. So now I have two of these. Um, this is the one I got from Mass Drop. Um, this is the power supply it came with. Just real quick, start of the, start of the review. Um, yeah, it comes with this detachable, interchangeable um, head, and it only came with the European one. So, uh, to Amazon I went, and I found a 15 volt, I think it's 2 amp? 15 volt 1 amp. I bought a 15 volt 2 amp. So I've upgraded the power supply in this unit. Um, it doesn't affect the output or anything. It's just shit. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mass Drop. Because I definitely live in Europe. They don't even ship to Europe. But I got the European power supply. And what is what this is compared to the MX3. The MX3 was probably the best low wattage solution for speaker amp on a desk with a DAC built in, with a headphone amp built in. And I was talking about that if you wanted to use it as like a source. It was so clean. You would plug a source into the headphone output and you just you go with that way. So this has no speaker outputs. Instead, this is just either line out or pre out and you get two coaxial ins, one optical in, one USB in and Bluetooth. So looking like a win-win, like looking win, like I, have the, I got those uh, plugged into the front. I got my Neumanns. It's got this big, beautiful screen. It's got the clickiest volume control of all fucking time. It's beautiful. It's well put together. It's got a remote control. We're ready to fucking review this. It's not a perfect unit. And I will dabble throughout this beautiful review. By the way, Canto Tux. Review coming August 1st because they asked me to review them and then release that on August 1st because that's when they're going to be out. So I've got this super... Let's not look at them too much or I'll have to not look down my pants. We'll look at her instead. So this unit, where do I see it going? On a desk? Yes, absolutely. In a living room, if you're using powered monitors like I have here? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm currently using the line out for the 789 because I'm testing the DAC. See the specs on this thing. There's a big, giant piece of paper. Oh, graphs! There's so many graphs. Look how many graphs there are. I want total harmonic distortion plus noise. A weighted, please. Output. I got 0.0005 percent, and the highest it goes is 0.003 percent. That's fucking low, and it claims up to 300 ohm headphones. So. These are, what are you getting? 300 ohms? Yeah, there you go, perfect. It's not a perfect unit though. It doesn't, I think the MX3 was more perfect than this. This has some flaws, some glaring ones, and we'll get to those. Uh, but right now, the way I have it situated on my desk, fiber optic in because I'm a fiber optic whore. I don't like USB. I don't want to plug it into her and have her pop up an error in her face and be like, um, do you have the drivers? Because this is Windows 7. I'm going to be like, hold on. I'm going to find some Chinese website that's hopping is and try to get anything out of that. And it's like, uh, kill me. Windows 10, sure enough, just plug it in. It'll probably work just fine on USB. Also, does anybody actually use coaxial digital? Like anybody. Because if I think they could have changed out literally all two of these coaxial digitals to just three goddamn fiber optics. Are there game consoles? You tell me, because I don't have every product on Earth, and I don't know how everyone's setup is. Do motherboards carry coaxial out? Because I think most of them are fiber optic. But here's our output, which is currently going there, which is currently going there to power these. And I can assess the DAC that way in the best way possible. And in the best way possible, I'll say it has an amazing DAC. It's right up there with any other $100 standalone DAC. The difference is you get to either run it full tilt or act as a preamp, which means you could adjust the volume. Now we're gonna plug into these Canto fucking tux and we're gonna do that in a second. But there's an issue with the ability to switch from a pre to a full line out and it's way too easy. And if you don't know, a line out is line out. It's here's all the voltage out. 
and a pre-out is here's my adjustable volume and then you could set the adjustable volume to maximum. Well a line out is basically if you took away the adjustability and it's just maximum. And it's literally a button press and then these speakers go from adjustable to fuck as hard as humanly possible. So I'm a little bit peeved because I was playing with it on the desk no more than 20 minutes ago and then it nearly took my hearing out. And the speakers which I have to send to another reviewer so that's mm, little white silicone feeties. Good Bluetooth receiver. Um, it popped up, I'm using this currently. This is the uh, M6, and it's just playing random things. Just random things are just streaming through the air into this little box, and I'm just gonna leave it right right there. You're gonna sit right there. Um, the front has no apparent buttons, just a knob. Now, they've done a real good job with this knob. You hold it down, power is off. You, you gotta, you gotta oh, let me shut it off again. You get a little light there indicating that it does have power. So it doesn't, you can't, you can't not tell it's powered. It does, can't tell it's like, oh, is it dead? Is it not? A little light, fine. Turn it on, press. We are currently in DAC mode. DAC mode means full line out. We are at 44.1, which is what's coming from the computer. Johnny Cash is playing over there. We're in the optical. If we rotate, nothing happens. There's no adjustability here. We press it once. We switch now to coaxial one. Coaxial 2, Bluetooth. So now that's playing. If I want to hear this, let's move this out of headphones, go to speakers. My God, have mercy on my soul if this fucks up. Right. I'm going to use the volume knob there because it's still saying 44.1. If it's saying 44.1, that's the kilohertz that are being fed into it. It means it's not controlling the volume. That is full tilt this still don't do nothing if you wanted to do something you double tap this oh we've switched to headphones which are now controllable so that's how you'd switch from output in the back to output actually you see this flashing that's outputting to both so headphones are going and speakers are going we double tap again now the headphone light is not blinking now it's just headphones the built-in headphone amplifier in this. I want to give you the tour, but I'm going to sort of deviate because I don't want to forget anything. And as I get to a place, I want to warn you about stuff. So, we now have to sh switch the remote. Lower that down. Power, basically. Mute, which puts up a big lines. That's it, done, mute. Up, down, left, right. This is input select. Left and right, you can literally move it back if you go Coaxial is this way, optical, USB, and Bluetooth this way. The center is what switches. Is it what switches? Where's my manual again? I threw it on the floor. One second. Verifying something. I don't want to get this wrong because it's stupid. 4-9. Headphone amp line output switch. Headphone amp line output switch. Okay. Why can't I switch back? Oh, that switches to it. So now, wait. Okay, so now that's that. So you hit it, and it takes it to that place. It doesn't switch back and forth. It's not a toggle. If you want to switch from the headphone out to the line out, then you hit the line out button or the headphone button. Now headphones are solid. Wow, I just figured this out. So there's three buttons that move you between the three modes. So you can double press this. Now the DAC's playing. That. It just did the thing. That just did the thing. So there's actually four modes. There's headphones only, headphones only. Then you hit this middle button. Then the headphones flash, which means it's outputting from this and this at the same time. And then there's the line out mode which sets it to DAC, says DAC, but it's showing the volume. So if I set this volume, now I can control what is playing. That's Bluetooth playing, why? What the hell? Perfect. Now I can control the volume of these speakers. Oink, oink. That's Bruce Willis, by the way. That's a Bruce Willis song. Bruce Willis made an album, made two albums, they're amazing, and he then lost his hearing in Die Hard when he was shooting under the table and no longer makes music, which is real sad. 
But as you can see, I'm controlling the volume of these speakers. So let's lower the volume. Now, we got there by pressing the line out button. I could switch headphone fully, both with that button or this to the volume controllable line out. Now here's where shit gets fucked up. Press this line out button again. And press it again. Uh, with the push of a button, and it's cyclable here too by double clicking. You can go from pre-out to line out. And that's scary as fuck. Because that happened at even louder volume when I was actually just setting all this up and double checking it all. And I wanted to twist the remote nap and stab it. But that's the main... That If you're wondering what the biggest problem with the unit is, that's it. Because I think if you're buying this, you're buying it for the DAC, you're buying it for the headphone out, which again, we're going to talk about that for a second. But that line out thing, I have to get out of the way. Because most people don't watch the end of this review, and if you pick one up without seeing that... Because it's... If you are very, very careful, if you're an adult and you're sober most of the time, you could avoid that by just never double clicking, never accidentally clicking. You can go from headphone to both to headphone to line out. Fine. But if you miss click, you're going to deafen yourself. Now, when I had this plugged in to the other amp, that other amp, indeed, these also have another volume control which I'm controlling it with. But if you were to buy this and a set of Atom T5Vs and hook them up with wires, Atoms are volume controls in the back that you set and then you never touch again. So you'd want to preamp this all the time. What I would suggest you do is you set this to line or set the volume control all the way up when you have it set up correctly. Then you turn the speakers up as loud as you'd ever want them to go before destruction. And this way, if you accidentally to do that, there won't be destruction, you'll just be scared out of your fucking gourd. So, that's major. That's the major one. The other thing that's an issue is when we go to headphone, and I plug in any headphone, I'm going to use the, the uh, Neumanns right now, because hashtag trust, hashtag love. Oh, Bluetooth. I'm going to switch off of Bluetooth, which is a single press off to USB, to optical, so now I'm on the computer. She's looking it up. Moth. Now, I'm at negative 20, negative 21. There was a way on the other unit to switch between relative and absolute volume. And I haven't come across it. By the way, this is everything they make. Remember when I said that there was... Oh, God, I can't hear myself because I'm wearing Neumanns. Remember when I said that there was, like, two topping companies? Because I was reviewing, like, that... What was the other, the, the amp, like the A30 and the, A, the, the P30 DAC, uh, P20 DAC, P10, whatever. I felt like there was one side of topping that makes this stuff. Like the high-end, beautifully crafted, really nice stuff. And then the other side of topping that makes like the piles of topping that are just like okay, but not anywhere near as nicely built or anything. And I think this is a catalog of just the good stuff. So look, there's the NX4, love that thing. Here's the DX3 Pro. There's the MX3, there's a PA3 desktop amplifier. I have to look at that. The D10 up there, love that thing. Ooh, D70 is a fully balanced DAC. And then here's the D30 and the D and the D30 and the A30, which didn't feel like they were from the same company. And then there's something called the DX7S, which is huge, and the D50 desktop DAC. So maybe I'll look into some of those. Where was I? I got lost. Oh, headphones. We plug in our headphones and I'm adjusting the volume and I'm putting it up. Now there is a high-low gain. Um, fur, by the way, is filter. And you don't know what the filter is. It just says filter one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's listed in the bath that's on the floor. And it's like slow appetizing, fast appetizing. Actually, one of them doesn't say short. It says shot. So you get a shot filter too. Because I don't know, if, I don't honestly hear much difference when I switch between filters. I'm glad they include that, but they don't really need to. M, that's your gain control. I know it shouldn't be called M, it should be called G for gain control, but it literally will go gain zero or gain plus nine. Now, when I put the gain up to plus nine, 
and I'm pause music, these are driven much easier. Oh, I pushed it in and I lost the setting. Problem is, I don't like the way these sound on high gain. And there are headphones that requires high gain, and this is a headphone that re requires high gain. But um, for the love of all that is holy, don't use it. That nine decibels sounds like it's nine dB over zero. And even though it's pushing the volumes at a much lower level, I can actually hear like a like a grunty, they sound bloated and fat. None of these, they lose their airiness and what makes these headphones sound good. So here's the thing. They both still work on low gain, on zero plus gain. Um, you just have to bring it more towards like the plus 10, plus f negative 10, negative five. You have to get up near the top. But both of these still work and both of it sounds amazing. So you basically lose the ability to use high gain because I just don't like the way it sounds. I love I love the way the low and low gain sounds. The low gain sounds like the MX3 did. It's a dedicated amp. It sounds like good DAC, good amp, perfectly fine, absolutely worth its cost. Put on the high gain, eh? It's like it's a crapshoot. It feels like there might be bass boost or something, which there's none of that on this. The other MX3 had bass and treble. You don't have it for this because you're using lineouts. So for speakers like this. Um, the last two buttons, one is to adjust the brightness of the unit, L1, L2, L3. I'll leave it on L1 for now, I'm not sure how the camera picks it up. And then auto, you have A equals C, or A-0 and A-C. Can you guess what those are? I couldn't guess either. It's the auto power off function, and A-0 means it's off. And A-C means it's off. Uh, no, wait, I might be wrong. I still can't fucking remember. Give me this stupid paper floor. Why would you do this to me? Standby power off input signal switches, two way buttons. Where did I see it? There's your super, there's your low dispersion shot f delay filter. 8 8 shows up, finish your turning off. Tips there are two ways to see these settings press button around, press key. I stay in the interface, left to right, different parameters, next setting. Gain A, oh, AO is on and AC is off. So in this case, C represents off. So if you want the unit to auto turn off, put it on AO for auto off on. Did you understand why I cut myself at night? And then AC means auto off is off, so it'll stay on. Me and her, we're just we're just gonna live together happily on a beach, happily on a beach. So I think we've discovered everything about the remote control. Uh, that's your switch, and there's your volume control, and it's got a. N I actually am a little bit annoyed about how clicky the volume is. It's just a bit too. It's a little bit too much. Just let's double press. Now we're on the DAC, negative 40. Oh, there's a giant fucking quiet part in this Polaris song. Oh, uh, don't do this to me, random chance on the internet. Give me music that's actually playing. Well, I have a lot of Pink Floyd. Foo Fighters, nah. <laughs> See, ideally, since I'm using these uh, Canto Tux as an example, I would definitely set this to full line out and use that volume control. If you're hooking this up to another amplifier, a dark voice, an X Duo, uh, TA10 or TA20, or 789 or, or um, Jadis Labs Atom, any of those amps, you need more power, you want something else, leave this on l full line out where it, where it does. <laughs> Hey, remember when I almost woke the speakers in that video? Yeah, that was just now. They still sound fine. These things are great. That was negative 57 decibels to zero. And it happened because I'm trying to show you things. If you try to do this on your own, you have to promise me.
promise me as an audience member of Z Reviews, you have to be better than everyone else on the goddamn internet, that you will never fuck that up. Like, I think I could hit this button twice and then do a thing. So now I hit the button twice and now it's playing both headphones and line out. But if you press it again, now it plays just headphones, you press it again, now it plays just the deck, you press it again, and it goes full fucking line out and kills everybody. So I'm trying to show you that if you have self-powered monitors with their own adjustment, a set of swans, a set of edifiers, adjust with the edifiers and the swans. If you're going to run T T5Vs or, I don't know, Mackies, because those none of those are designed to have you touch the volume on them because they're individual and separate and they're professional monitors. Be very careful. Adjust the volumes on that so that you hit just the maximum. The max. What I just did to these speakers is criminal, and um, I should get like seven lashings. But I, but I'm Zeo, so I won't. And me and my anime wife, who's will live on happily ever after. It's the power of the YouTube. So yeah, um, be fucking careful. Do I put this to zero? That's now as loud as it'll ever go. If I double click, it's as loud as it ever goes. Then I could adjust with this. That's, it's a very clean sounding unit. The DAC is very good. It has decent connectivity. I think I'd rather have two fiber optics than two extra coaxels. USB is probably fine on Windows 10. The Bluetooth is excellent. It does uh, fucking LDAC. It does all the high end formats. This one comes up as uh, Aptex HD. The front is so fucking clean and it got a real plug and it, you could plug in any headphones you want. I wish it was a quarter inch, but can't get everything you want in this world. You can't use the high gain. I don't recommend it. Try it. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my upgraded power supply causes a plus nine to sound bloated and not distorted, but just like not clean anymore. And be fucking careful because you could do it. You could do the line out bug with one click of a button here. Or you could do it by double tapping if you're trying to navigate with one button that's a knob and then you're like, you're like, wait, I need to double tap it. Because you can't get around the cycle. With the remote, you could pick headphone or line out. But if you're not using the remote, if it's on your desk and you want to go from this, which is pre out, which is a volume control, to just headphone out, you have to double click. You have to go to blow my speakers up world. And then you can go past it to headphone and line out, and then you can go past that to headphone out. So I recommend you keep this remote control around you and you keep it fucking charged. And if you're not using your speakers, shut them off. Get a power strip that you can just shut off the speakers so you don't accidentally blow something up. But overall, besides the death that this can, can cause and the fact that high gain sort of distorts, it's a great unit. All right? Not a, not a glowing, absolutely in love. MX three was a revelation because the speaker amp in that at only 39 watts was clean and because of how clean that was and because of its beauty and the knob and i love the way it felt and the way it sounded that got like the full zeos treatment this this mildly hurt me like physically like ow so it gets a little bit more of like a like i step back a bit and assess it you you pass, but people will be warned. Don't fuck with them. I'm looking at you, Topping. Don't you fuck. She's watching. She'll beat your ass. So, that's it. That's where we are. I hope you get yours with an American power supply, unless you don't live in America. But then again, if Mastrap does this to me, maybe they'll send you an American one. And then we're all fucked together. So, that's the end of this review. Um... I'd like to thank the person who sent me their unit. Uh, it'll be in a yard sale. He's like, yeah, just, just sell that thing. I cannot find the power brick for it. Ironically, I can't find that power brick. I'm sure it's somewhere. But when I do find it, you'll know. And um, if you wanna join the yard sales, it's $5 on my Patreon. That's the $5 monthly tier. That gets yard sales and every video early. You also asked to get also get to ask me any questions. The ten dollar Patreon tier gets you into a private Telegram chat where you end up on my phone. And if I'm shopping and someone's like, "Hey, Zeos, what did you think about the MX3 when you did the thing for?" and I will just hit a button and I will talk to you and say, "Well, I thought it was shit and I thought it smelled like bad rutabagas." Speaking of bad rutabagas, and I'll just 
film Bad Rue de Vegas because that's what I do on my phone. Um, so that's that's the exclusive ten dollar tier, and then other tiers after that just are showing off. But thank you, um, RMAF. I will definitely. I don't know if I'll have one of these at RMAF. I probably should, but at the same time, someone might just show up and accidentally. So maybe I'll skip this at RMAF and just get an MX3 for powering stuff. Uh, what else? Hi-Fi Guides. There'll be a post on the Hi-Fi Guides forum. If you don't know what HiFiGuides.com is, it's the replacement for our Zeos. It's a recommendation buying guide. So you can send your mother there and she'll be able to find her own headphones and speakers and there's going to be DACs and amps like this. All that stuff will be there, but currently it's basically headphones, subwoofers, and speakers are the big three. We've got to work on some other ones. But it all whittles down. It's a great, it's a great system. Glad I paid a ton of money to have someone design that for me. Um, let's please make it profitable. Uh, so yeah, this, that, these cantos will have their own review. Don't ask. Stop asking. Why are you typing that? I see you typing it. Yes, August first. I'll probably maybe it'll even come out July thirty first. So I get the hype up like a day first, a day before. And then, you know, just carry it through. Because they are amazing. And look, they hold up to so much damage. <sighs> okay. This video is done. I will see you guys tomorrow. Check out all the links. Download her. $2 patrons, by the way, get all my old wallpapers. Like, all the ones I've ever used. You want to be in that tier. And I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>